This playlist already includes several videos that take a deep dive on the cost of carry model as it pertains to consumption and investment commodities. Now I would just like to visually summarize the key features and the difference between contango and normal backwardation, which is what we expect from a consumption commodity. So this illustrates the typical situation that we would expect from a consumption commodity, and that is we would expect a contango and normal backwardation. Contango is just a fancy term for an upward sloping futures curve. I like to remind that that is a feature of a curve that we observe today, right? The, we observe a spot price, we know what the spot price is, and then we would observe a set of traded futures prices. I'm only showing here the first one. So for example, if this is July, then there might be an August futures price. And in Contango, it's greater than the spot price. But we would also have a series of futures prices that go out further into the future. So there are at least two things we would say about a Contango or inferences that we would make when we observe the Contango. And the first one is that the cost of carry is greater than the convenience or the convenience yield. C is cost of carry, Y here denotes convenience yield. And our, that's based on our cost of carry model that I've covered in previous videos, which tells us, gives us a formula for the theoretical futures price here as a function of the spot price grown at the net cost of carry. That is to say, the Factors that are a burden of ownership or cost of ownership would drive this up, and they are risk-free rate and storage cost. And then there are benefits or enjoyments of commodity ownership that would pull this down. And those are Q, a tangible income or dividend, and Y, the intangible convenience yield. So they get subtracted. In a consumption commodity, typically there won't be dividend or income, so I'll assume that zero and cross it out such that for a consumption commodity, the two cost of the two cost of carry factors tend to be the risk-free rate, cost of financing, and the storage cost. So R plus U is the cost of carry. And so that first inference we make with a contango is that if it's upward sloping, well, it must be the case that the cost of carry is outweighing or is greater than the convenience yield, which is a subtraction. The other inference we could make is that the risk-free rate is greater than the lease rate. And I have a, a previous video cover lease rate, so I won't go into detail on that, except just to remind that the lease rate is the convenience minus the storage cost. If I own the commodity and if I lend it to you, then my rational lease rate would be the convenience I enjoy that I forego minus the storage cost that I'm saving. And you'll, so you'll notice then if I add the storage cost back to both sides, I have a risk-free rate plus storage cost is greater than the convenience yield. And these are my cost of carry factors. So this is actually identical. This notion that the risk-free rate is greater than the lease rate is identical to cost of carry being greater than the convenience yield. So Again, just to recap, we observe the contango, and with the contango, we would tend to infer that one, the cost of carry is greater than the convenience yield, or that the risk-free rate is greater than the lease rate. Now, I also said that we would expect a normal backwardation, and I like to remind that unlike the contango, which is observed, the normal backwardation is not observed because normal backwardation is about the relationship of the futures price to the expected future spot price, right? It's common confusion to new learners. They think they should be the same, but the futures price is what we observe today. If we're here today in July, it's a promise to buy or sell this commodity at a predetermined delivery window in the future at a predetermined price. The expected future spot, if we're here in July, we can predict or anticipate or make a wager on what the expected future spot price is, but nobody can know what it is. Well, normal backwardation is just the theory that tells us this forward price, this traded future or future futures price that we observe today should be less than the expected future spot price. And then the 
relationship linking them is actually future price here is equal to, I'm going to say expected future spot price times E raised to the R minus, I'll use a K, I'm following John Hull's notation. So this is the relationship linking the forward price to the expected future spot price. And you'll notice here the key in the exponent is this new variable, which is not part of the cost of carry model, actually K, which stands for the discount rate. And so, for example, John Hull, in his superficial approach to this, uses the capital asset pricing model to determine K, the discount rate. So if the beta, I'm sorry, if the commodity has a positive beta, which we might naturally expect, then per the capital asset pricing model, or for many other models for that matter, we would expect the discount rate to be greater than the risk-free rate. Let me put that more simply. If this commodity has any risk, we might expect the discount rate to be greater than the risk-free rate. So you'll notice that's a negative here in this exponent. And that's why we actually expect normal backwardation, at least under this theory. So for example, if the discount rate is 5% greater than the risk-free rate, you'd have a negative 5 in a negative 5% in this exponent. And this translates into a multiple of about 95 and 0.95 and change, and a forward price that's about 95% of the expected future spot price. Okay, so but the numbers aren't as significant or don't matter as much. It's just the fact that, remember, we start here with the contango upward sloping, cope, the upward sloping futures curve that we observe, and at the same time, it's fully consistent that the expected future spot price is even higher than this futures price. And we call that normal backwardation. And that's why we can have a contango and normal backwardation at the same time. So the only final thing I'll say about that is the cost of carry gives us a theoretical futures price. And when we go into practice, that doesn't mean that we are surprised if the traded futures price is not identical, right? The traded futures price can be a little bit different. It shouldn't get arbitrage. We'll keep it pretty close. But there are technical or market factors, supply, demand, liquidity, for example, that allow it to trade rich or trade cheap. We won't be, that, we have a theory on what, to, what we think it will be, but we won't be shocked if it's a little bit higher, or a little bit lower, trading rich or trading cheap due to non-fundamental factors that are not in our model. Okay, so then I'll just briefly show the same set of factors, but this time we would have a backwardation. And so backwardation is the sibling to contango, and it's the fancy term for an inverted futures curve. And so you can see, in this case, a backwardation is when that futures price is less than the spot price. And we can make the similar inferences. We would say that from a backwardation, we would infer that the cost of carry is less than the convenience yield. And just as we did before, the other inference we would make or could make is that the risk-free rate is less than the uh, lease rate. And as before, if we have a backwardation, and this would be typical or has been typical historically for oil to have a backwardation, if we have a backwardation under the theory, we probably would still expect a normal backwardation. So here we have backwardation and normal backwardation because the observed futures curve is inverted such that we have a lower futures price, but we might still expect, we probably would still expect that the expected future spot price is greater than the observed or and or theoretical futures price. Okay, then finally, the other key feature is the roll return. And so here I go back to the contango, but now I'm showing two uh, futures prices in the future. And let's just say that we're in July, which we actually are. It's July 18th today. And let's just say the July spot price is $8.
and that this is an August futures contract for $9, and this is a September futures contract for $10. Upward sloping, it's a contango. Then the other thing we say is that in contango, the roll return or roll yield is negative. And what we mean specifically by that is if you take a long position in a contango, you're exposed to negative roll return or negative yield. It's a long position, not a short. And so, for example, if we're here in July, we take this a two-month contract. We take a long position in the September contract, which is in two months. That's a promise to purchase at $10. We're basically buying at $10. And then let's just imagine we go forward one month in time to August. When we get to August, our September contract only has one month remaining maturity. And then what, would, what can we assume about this forward curve? Well, a typical assumption is that it's unchanged. That has two parts. We might assume, if we assume the spot price doesn't change and the shape of the forward curve does not change, then we're looking at the same forward curve. But as we go from July to August, our two-month contract becomes a one-month contract. And if this curve has been static, unchanged, then the price on our September contract, which is now one month, is down to $9. The forward price converges on the spot price as maturity approaches. So if the spot price doesn't change, really this forward price has to come down. But we purchased or we bought, we took a long position at 10, and now we're at 9. So we might close out. Most contracts are closed out rather than held to delivery. And you'll so we've the roll return here has us right selling at nine, closing out, entering a sale, uh, sell, entering a uh, sell selling position in order to close out the buying position. Nine minus ten, where we bought divided by 10, our roll return is negative 10% on a long position. If we were short, we would gain 10%. So the way that I think about that is in contango, I think of that as sliding down the curve, right? We buy or open a position here at a higher point. It's the elapse of, it's merely the elapse of time under a static curve that exposes us here. We're gonna be opening and closing opening high or buying high and selling low by definition in the contango. Similarly, under a backwardation here, it's the opposite, at least for a long, right? If it's a, if we're in backwardation and in this case, we would a uh, two month contract, we enter to purchase here, this might be eight, nine and 10. We buy at eight, the two-month contract becomes a one-month contract. We close it out by entering a sale, a sales or a short position to close it out. It's a plus one gain. So for the long position in backwardation, there's a positive roll return or positive yield. But again, that's just for a long. A short will experience a loss. So the roll return is the other fe the other feature we associated with the uh, contango and backwardation. I hope that's helpful. If, it, if this videos are helpful, please subscribe to the channel and we'll keep you updated. Thank you.